So hi everyone, I'm with Megan Christensen and we are submitting her pre-pub book link which is the LCCN. You're going to need that for your copyright, for your CIP, so your copyright page, your CIP, and I have two separate links that I'm going to post down in the description of this video. One which is for publishers where you can add yourself as a new publisher and one for those like Megan who are authors submitting for their LCCN. So here we go. This is as an author submission. All right, so now if you scroll down, you see where it says request LCCN? Perfect, that's exactly where you click. What browser are you using? Safari. I wonder if it's going to give you trouble with Safari. Chrome. Yeah, I think so. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Not your fault. Can I just copy this right over? I think you can. Yeah, the web pages for the copywriting and for some of these other pages are just ridiculous. You shouldn't have to recreate your account. You should be able to just log in now. Click in the top right there where it says log in. Yeah, so actually this is good to be able to show people that not all browsers tend to work on these links. So if you end up seeing that you're having some issues with the pages, it's probably just you need to go into a different browser. Unfortunately, these aren't the greatest. I've noticed it with both this prepub book link and also copyright pages. They're just awful. Okay, so you can't use the browser's back button. Yep. Will the forthcoming book be published in electronic only? No. Will the book appear at periodic intervals? What does that mean? That would be like if it was a quarterly newsletter or, you know, something that's going oh. to be re-released, so I wouldn't say that. Yes for children. Mm -hmm. Great levels K to 1, ages 2 to 7, 32 pages, English, and we'll say October. And next. Okay, so the contributor type is author. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to add like your illustrator, you would put the new name up there? Okay, I'm just going to do it myself for right now. Okay. Yep, that sounds fine. Sorry. That's okay. Does it matter, like, lowercase and uppercase? I don't think so. I think, you know, you just want it to be the way that the title is going to appear. So if it's Wally is all in capitals on your title, you probably want it all caps here. Okay. Makes sense that it would match. I don't have a subtitle or an addition. My publisher, myself. <laughs> yep, it says put your own name in the field below if you're the self-publisher. wondering if I should put my home address, like... I don't know. You mean Wally and Benji aren't going to get into any more trouble? <laughs> well, I don't know. That makes me sad. <laughs> okay. I say yes, and then maybe it won't, or... No, you can always go back and change things later if you need to. Okay, so then I need one of my ISBNs on here. Correct. It's on myidentifiers.com oh, yeah. for broker. And now do the sign-in. Okay, now under my account on the far right, manage ISBNs. There you go. And then you've already got that one, so you just want to copy that. Yep. Well, isn't this exciting? You get okay. there. So paperback first, because I don't do an ebook here, right? No, they don't have it as an option. So. Okay, yep. Oh, will they also be published electronic? Yes. So then let's go over so. here. Yeah, so if you want to, like I did assign an ISBN to my ebook, so. I should mention though, while you're filling this out, that you don't have to assign an ISBN for an ebook, although I do, because I know that eventually I'll be listing my ISBN, my ebook in other places besides Amazon. So if Amazon gave me a free ISBN to use, I want to be able to know on all different formats that that's my ebook, you know. So I like to have it listed. And what other formats besides Amazon would you put an ebook on? You mean an ISBN? No, like, like if you want to use your oh. ebook in other yeah. so platforms. so there are other sites you can submit your ebook to like Kobe, Smashwords, Draft to Digital, and you can submit these and they'll like send them out to a bunch of other areas. But if you're exclusive to Amazon, 
you're promising them that you're not going to do that. Okay. That's only going to happen. You only have to sign up to be exclusive with Amazon for 90 days at a time. So if you ever decide I'm going to stop and you want to submit, you know, other places besides just Amazon, I just feel like it's good to have the eBooks are all going to be, you know, you'll have it a standard across all of the eBooks. Okay. Maybe I should do that. So would you, how do I tell that this is my eBook? So oh, that, I would do my format and size. Yeah, the format. There you go. Yeah, each one of these, I would even, you know, go through it now just to select the things that are required. And then you can go back and, you know, save more and update things more when you're ready to go. Okay. Oh, well, for my, for the sake of time, I'm just going to use this. In the yeah, you can go back and assign the title later. Ebook, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. A book summary. It had been prepared. Yeah. So, some, <laughs> yeah. So, if you have a, a book description or whatever, yeah. then you can. I have one. You do. Good. Good. Okay. Any information you think might be useful in the cataloging process? Uh, I don't. Don't usually need anything there. Should I put anything about my columns on the side? You can enter it here if you think it might be helpful for them to know. Okay. So then click on next section. Now it's just going to give you the overview of everything you've entered. Okay. And now you've got the submit. Scary. And that's all there is to it, Megan. Okay, that was easy enough. Yes. Now that you have that, I'm going to share something with you. I have the CIP information and you'll want to fill that out as well. I'll just talk you briefly through what it is that they expect you to do with that and I'll let you fill it out yourself. There you go. Okay. Okay, so because we are independent publishers and we are self-published, we don't qualify to do the CIP through the Library of Congress. So this place, Adrian Bashista, CIPblock.com, they offer that service. And so if you scroll down here, you'll see that, so here, CIP data form, everything from that all the way to the end, you want to copy that where it says CIP data form, and you want to throw it into an email. And then you either email the information to Adrian Batista, or you can send it by snail mail and with a check. And you can see uh, her contact information is on that page. And do you see where the buy now button is below it? Mm-hmm. That's where you'll submit $60. Oh, okay. And so see it says email or send $60 via PayPal, and she gives you the information. And then the recipient is this. Yeah, the woman there, right, that email. And that's the email that you use for PayPal as well. Oh, okay. I need to pay and she's actually really quick with turning it back around. And so that CIP information also goes on your copyright page. That's it. And librarians will use the information when they're entering the book into their online catalogs. That's what the CIP is all about. Okay. It helps, it helps librarians. And so it gives your book more legitimacy because the librarians will know the information's already there for them. All they need to do is take it from that page. If they don't see it there, it's kind of a, a red flag to them that, oh, this book hasn't gone through that Library of Congress or hasn't gone through a CIP assignment. Mm -hmm. So okay. that screams self-published book if okay. you don't have it. So we definitely want to make sure we, we do that for our books. Okay. Okay. So right here, has author published any other works? You would just take out all of this, right? I would just say no and then just leave it open, leave it empty or whatever, because they're, they're going to change and put the information when they assign the block they'll assign it but if I, like for me I've published a few other things so they'll have my other works have you ever been to like a library and look at the card catalog and it says mm -hmm. the different works that that particular author has published that's what they're looking for and you're gonna have the LCCN back so you're gonna put the ISBN but then you're gonna need to have the LCCN that okay. you get assigned which you'll have probably in another couple of days okay. you put that there as well and then if you have that then you can submit get all the information here and then you can be able to submit index? this you just put your own name for the publisher and there's no index right no okay and then location projected date first edition 
Well, it says, is this a new edition, first edition, revised edition? Yeah. It would, just be, would it be new or first? Yeah, I think what she it would be is a first edition, I suppose. And then how will it appear on the title page? Oh, maybe it's none. Yeah, that's true. Because then you won't have to, and then just put NA on the, how it'll appear on the title page. And it's juvenile, right? Yes. Would you say my book's two to seven? I would probably say three to seven or three to eight, something like that. Yeah, that would be fine. And then you're going to look for the BSAC. You'll follow that and then choose any headings that make sense for your book. You know, there's all kinds of subjects yeah. of, for the type of things for children's books. Okay, so I just go through these yeah. and copy and paste them in. Exactly. As you click on them, you'll see, like, is there a children's? That's right. Let's just click on a random one. Yeah, so you clicked on humor, so it's got all of these different humor ones. So it's similar okay. to a category on Amazon. Right. So I'm just going to go through each one of those topics and copy and paste just these numbers, or should I do the whole thing? I did the whole thing and just okay. put them under there. So here, you would be juvenile fiction, right? Right. Yeah, definitely not nonfiction. <laughs> So yeah, that so, would be so you'll, have a lot lot of, issues. you'll have a lot of stuff in here to choose from. Okay. okay. And so whichever ones apply to your story, I think that's mm -hmm. fine. I don't know if they have a limit of how many that they want you to put there. I don't think you have to go crazy with it, but I'd put at least a few. I can go and do that. Yep. And, and then, then like I said, the last bit of it is just going through and submitting that $60 once you've got the LCCN mm -hmm. and emailing her and saying, I've just submitted my $60. Here's the list. Let me know if there's anything I'm missing. Yeah, that's it. Okay, great. Oh, yeah, don't send it until after you get yeah. your LCCN <laughs> entered. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, good luck. Let me know okay. if you have any issues. Have a good night. Yeah.